Oh. Hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, it's only January 9th, which means I still have the pleasure of introducing the lineup for this year. So this is the second Monday of the month, and we chose a previous guest who has the honor of having the best hair of any guest we've ever had on Chef AJ Live, and I'm sure you'll agree. She does wonderful recipes, and her show is called Plant-Based Classics, where she's going to take the classics and make them healthy and make them plant-based. She's from Well Elephant, and her name is Lauren Burnick. I'm so happy to see you and beefless stew heck yeah yay thank you chef aj i'm so happy to be here i'm so honored to uh, have a little spot in your monthly lineup i appreciate it it's huge well, you have such delicious recipes and such a, a, a nice warm way of delivering them and you know I've, I've had beefless stew i've only had one kathy fisher's recipe which is excellent but i can't oh. wait to hear here to see your spin <laughs> on the classics and of course serving it with mashed potatoes what could be better yeah, exactly. I knew you'd like the mashed potatoes. I um, I called my spot on your channel um, Plant Based Classics because I'm the kind of person who, you know, like I love to make a pot of something and then I'll eat it. I don't care. I'll eat it three meals in a row. Like I'll eat it lunch, dinner, lunch again the next day. Um, you know, some people don't like to do that. My husband's not one on leftovers, but I, if it's a good leftover, I'm on it, you know, and that's how I can tell it's a bad leftover because it's still in the refrigerator has to get yeah. dumped. And if yeah. it, if it makes it to the point where it has to get dumped, then I'll never make it again. But I feel like, um, a lot of people, when they go whole food plant-based, they get nervous or like, Oh, I'm going to have to end up eating like a celery stick or, you know, that whole thing. Where am I going to get my protein? That whole thing. But you know, I just wanted to take all the things that we used to love and make them whole food plant-based compliant. Well, I, th I think that's a great idea to do that. Thank you. Um, you know, there are people that just don't like leftovers. I have a friend who's a, a personal chef for a celebrity, and that's one thing. They throw out a lot of food. They He will not eat leftovers, this particular uh, person. See. I think leftovers better than the first time. Agree. They get better the longer they sit and the flavors meld. No, I don't get it. I could eat that. But again, this is, I think it's like Dr. Doug Lyle, who's got the show this first Tuesday of the month would say it's a variation of personality. Some people are just more novelty seeking than others. Yeah. Oh, what does that say about me? I'm such a dud. <laughs> no, not at all. I'm like you. I love you. I'm say i I've been eating Hannah Yam and broccoli every day for 12 years now. I don't get tired of it if it's good. If I didn't like it, of right. course, it would be different. Exactly. If it's good, it's good. And I'm happy to yep. eat it. Yep. So what else? Anything else we need to cover? No, I just can't wait to see how you make it because it's okay. so yummy. You know, what's great about stew isn't the beef. It's all the other parts. Exactly. And the brothy part. Um, yeah, I agree with you. So, all right, let's get started. I'm embarrassed for when you see how like I cut an onion and all that, but no, but see, oh. but that's what people want. People want real people. Yes, we have a couple of, you know, chefs on the show, but like Colin Zhu, but most yeah. people are not chefs. They need to learn how to cook like a regular person. Regular person. Yes. Thank you. Okay. So let me, I'm going to put my other camera on. Let's see. I guess we don't need my reading glasses in the shot. All right. All right, so we're gonna start. So these are the main things. I'm gonna put in some frozen vegetables too, but like you're gonna do five carrots. I scrubbed them up, four stalks of um, celery. Our old friend, the portobello, where we had the debate, do you use the weird part or not? And I learned on your show, the weird part is actually called the gills. Um, <laughs> remember that? Oh my gosh. And then onion, that's like the main thing that's going to go in. So I'm going to just start with the onion. I'm going to go back to this. I'm going to just do it this way. So you can see a little bit. Okay. I'm going to do it this way. Um, I know there's, like I said, special ways to cut the onion, but I don't know how that is. So and I've seen people do it a million times. And when they're doing it, I'm like, okay, I got it. I got it. 
And then as soon as I go to do it, I'm like, yeah, I don't got it. I don't know. So um, just take off the stuff. Hey, I'm even worse. I buy chopped onion a lot. You know, I should do that. Trader Joe's has it. I mean, it's just easy, you know, or frozen yeah. even. Chopped. Yeah, I know. I should get them pre-chopped. As many onions. I get the, I started getting the garlic, um, not chopped, but peeled. And that seems to... I mean, it doesn't seem like it's that big of a deal to peel a garlic, but I don't know. Anything to save time. But I know I need to start using the pre-chopped onions. I do, do they have organic? Um, I, don't I mean, I guess it doesn't They matter. might. They might. But I, it, where I've bought them at Trader Joe's, I don't think it's organic. Probably not. I think an uh, onion's okay but not to be organic. It's not on the dirty dozen, I don't think. It's not. It's not. Because um, it's the skin. Usually when it I, has the skin, you're pretty safe. Yeah, so I think you're right. That's something I could do. Of course, watch your fingers. I do have one of those chopper things. I love um, those, like the Vidalia Chop Wizard or the one from Shark. Yeah, Shopping. I should probably get bust that out. That really does save time. It does save, but you know what? I like everything pretty chunky, um, so I'm not going to use that um, for the stew. I really like the vegetables pretty chunky. Uh, so I'm just chopping up the onion. And what's the weather like? Have you had cool weather? It's raining a lot in California, isn't it? It is. I, it, it's like, I feel like we're in the floods, like Noah's Ark. I mean, I did not know it was going to rain here nonstop for days, weeks. It's crazy. It's, yeah, that's not supposed to happen. I've never been but in rain. No, that's nuts. There's a beef, rain in California. Beefless stew is a good recipe for rainy days. That's what I was going to say. When it's cold, when it's rainy, it's so nice. This is so warm. And it's like, um, has like a little bit of a tang because you're going to see we're going to put some uh, cloudy apple juice in there and some Worcestershire and some um, vegetable broth. And it just makes such a nice, like big, thick broth thing. Okay, so I got my onions going. I'm going to start sauteing them. Let me put this over here. Worcestershire is such a hard word to both say and Worcestershire. I know. Spelling it, forget it. I know it looks like Worcestershire or something like that. Okay. I'm going to get this going. Wrong burner. Um, a nice high, medium high heat. Get the pan all hot. Uh, and then I'm going to put my onions in while I chop the rest of this stuff. Get the onions going. Okay, so they're nice. They're thick chopped. So I like to heat the pan up first. Get it kind of warm. And then I'll put the onions in and then I'll put my broth in. Is that how you do yours? Or do you just put I, it I in? I do the onion. I just put the onion in. Yeah, right yeah, away. Right away. Put it in. Right. What broth do you use? A box or you make your own? Um, generally, I use a box. Sometimes I do make my own. I use, um, what's it called? Pacific brand. Yeah, I've heard It doesn't of that. have oil in it. Yep. That's no cool. oil. So I'll get that going. I'll just chop some more stuff. Um, like I said, I didn't peel the carrots. I just, I'm just going to give them a Thick, rough cut, chop, scrubbed them up real good. Could a, parsnip, oh. could a parsnip go in stew? Oh, absolutely. And I'm glad you asked that because just because I'm using these vegetables, you can use whatever vegetables you want. It doesn't have to be these. These are the ones that I like in a stew, but a parsnip would be delicious. Just like a carrot, yeah. almost. I don't know what, yeah, parsnip actually would be delicious in this. Why do I feel that sometimes people put pearl onions in their stew? Um, I have heard that. I don't know. They've never used a pearl onion. Aren't they just, what I are think they? They're just I think you can only get them frozen. They're like little circles, like marble size. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like they're in, um, I've seen them in jars. What are they in jars of? Like olives? Or, huh. Could be. 
That might be good. I mean, you could use those. You know, here's the thing. When I was saying like, oh, I want to re recreate all the things that I, I used to eat. I don't, I don't know that I ate. I was so paranoid to eat, I think. I was always, I just felt like I was always gaining weight. And I always had that mentality that like, oh, I can't eat this. It's off limits or... Um, so these are maybe things I wished I would have eaten, you know, in a way. Um, let me see how the onions are doing. So you can see it's starting to get like a little bit brown in the pan. And so now I'm going to add um, a little broth to that and deglaze the pan. That's where all the yummy stuff is. Is fogging up my camera? No. Okay, let those cook a little more. Um, so, you know, I don't know that I ever ate beef stew. I didn't love beef that much anyway, like in the before days. Um, but I probably would have eaten it just because, you know, if somebody served it to me. But I think that was one of the things like that I thought was off limits. And I thought maybe like potatoes were a little bit off limits, which is... The most ridiculous thing. I mean, you live off potatoes and look at you. <laughs> I, I love potatoes. I love potatoes too. And so that's, I mean, that's really why I love eating this way is because I feel like nothing's off limits. You just have to like reimagine it. Like just how would I make this really healthy? How would I make this whole food plant-based? So Instead of the beef, we're going to use these big mushrooms. Okay, I'm rough cutting this celery. I mean, you can make it nice and big. That's the thing about this recipe. It's easy to chop everything up because you don't have to make it real tiny. Let's see. Let me check on my onions. Ooh, that's a big piece. Billy, oh, those are going Billy, pretty good. Billy Gris. Oh, I, I'm, I'm going to pronounce your name wrong, Billy, even though you've been on my show, because I always pronounce things phonetically. But Billy, he was on my show New Year's Eve day, lost yeah. this amount of weight eating potatoes. And he goes, I love potatoes. That, I love that's it. the saddest thing when people think they can't eat potatoes and lose weight or be healthy. You know, I, I hate to, like, I don't want to bag on my mom. She was a good mom, but she uh, was always on a diet. I think I mentioned this before. She was always on the I was going to say keto, but it was called the Atkins diet back, back then. And um, she'd always say like, potatoes are fattening, you know, or whatever is fattening. And so we just didn't eat it. And it's, it's so sad because, all right, I'm taking out the ooky part, the weird part. I would have normally left it, but now you made me a little, your Zoom unity made me a little paranoid about the insides of these. So I'm taking these out. But yeah, so my mom would always be like, yeah, potatoes are fattening. We can't eat them. Corn's fattening or any kind of rice, like brown. We never had brown rice or anything like that. Um, but she was a, a devotee to the Atkins diet. And consequently, she's had three heart attacks. And, uh, or no, she's only had two, I'm sorry. And, um, you know, but she still eats like that. She still, she, I think I, I said this the last time I was on your show that I said, what'd you have for lunch today? And she goes, oh, I ate a baked potato, but don't worry. I didn't eat the potato. I just ate the butter, the sour cream and the bacon. I was like, mom, okay. So we have to agree to disagree on those types of things now, but. Oh my God. I know it makes me Jew crazy. Jewish parents. Hey, what are you going to do? Oy vey. All right, I'm going to put these other things in here so I have room for, to cut up my... Ah, I lost some carrots. Help. You could probably use baby carrots if you didn't want to cut stuff up. I like the taste of the big carrots better. I don't know why. I don't mind. I honestly, I don't mind chopping. Um, okay, see, it's getting brown right there. So you need a little more, deglaze the pan, a little more broth, get all those yummy things. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, it's starting to smell good. 
All right. And now I'm just going to rough, I'm going to, this is going to be the meaty part. So I'm going to make sure I cut them up kind of big. Yeah, and you could use any kind of mushrooms. If you want to use the kind that are already chopped, shiitake or whatever, any kind. This is just the kind I like because I like the big pieces. They're just big and meaty. Um, and you don't really have to saute the carrots and the celery for too long. And you especially don't want to um, cook the mushrooms too long because you don't want them to cook down. You, you do want them to still be big and meaty. So let me give this another stir. I'm not really trying to soften up these carrots and celery. They're not, it's just not going to happen um, right now, but I have preheated my oven to 425 and this, uh, stew is going to continue to cook in like a Dutch oven or some kind of stew pot uh, in the oven. So we don't want to cook it down too much. I'm going to add, I guess I'll, yeah, let me get ready and add all the good stuff here. All right, I'll add my mushrooms. And then this is the magic. All right, so you need like 15 ounces of broth. So it's just a little less than two cups. Doesn't have to be exact. One. Oh, I think I just put two cups, but oh well. Sue me. Okay, wait, I want to switch back because I want you to see this. Okay, this is the key to what I think makes a really good um, veggie stew or beefless stew, you want to get a dark and cloudy juice, apple juice. So make sure it has that, what, the sediment, all the good stuff in the bottom, all that good stuff you can see right there. And you're going to use two cups of that. I'm just going to pour that in. Whoa. Came out like a tsunami. All right, I got two cups of that. Oh, crap. You know what? I actually left out a step, but it'll be okay. Um, I should have covered my veggies in arrowroot before I poured all that stuff in, but it's still going to be fine. So I'm just going to do two tablespoons of arrowroot. You could use cornstarch. You can just use regular flour. I'm just going to pop that in there, sprinkle it over everything. What you see in the pot. So you can see the arrowroot. I'm going to give it a little stir. And then I'm going to put a quarter cup of the Worcestershire, vegan Worcestershire. Make sure it's vegan. And you just get that like at Whole Foods? Yeah, get it at Whole Foods. It's that brand. Yep, Whole Foods. Um, okay, so I'm going to bring that to a boil. I'm going to add, I already poured this out. Um, it's just a tablespoon of garlic powder and a teaspoon of smoked paprika. And I'm going to pour that in there. Bring it all to a boil. And I'm gonna put my um, frozen vegetables in there. So let me get those out. How do they make smoked paprika and why is it so much better? I don't know, but it tastes good, doesn't it? Yeah, I, I can't, what I it can't eat the regular anymore. It has no flavor. No. Ooh, Billy really? just lost another seven to eight pounds doing potatoes. Really? For how yeah. much has he lost? I saw, I've seen, I haven't watched his episode, but I um, Very saw some of his posts. I'm going to watch it. What, um, how much weight did he lose altogether? I believe over a hundred now. Wow. 
Oh, so uh, somebody's asking me to do your Aspen lasagna, but you've already done it on this channel, guys. Just use the little magnifying glass. She has a video of the Aspen lasagna on this channel. Yeah, yeah. I didn't do it on your show. I put it on there um, during for bundle something week. else, bundle yeah. week. But yeah, it's on there. Um, the Aspen lasagna. That's a good. That's another a classic. You know, something that I wished I would have eaten back in the day. I would have. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but you know, that was another thing I stayed away from. I feel like I just ate chicken and salad, chicken and salad, and I hated chicken, but I thought, well, that's what you eat. Um, and so this is just so much more satisfying. You can just eat so much more and eat a variety. All right. So green peas. I, and again, you don't have to use the vegetables I use and you don't have to use frozen. These are just always things I keep in my freezer. So I always have peas. I always have green beans. I always have organic corn. Um, and I'm just going to use, people want any one thing to overpower. So you don't want to put too many peas um, because then it's all going to taste like peas. Let's see. I put like, what did I say? Kind of a, I don't know, like a quarter of this little bag. Just measure it out. Just see. Here, I'll put the camera on so you can see. A little more. There's a question from a live. Yes. Dog yes, mom. live. Nice name, dog mom. What is Lauren's <clears throat> favorite recipe that she makes? Oh, that's a good question. What is my favorite recipe? I do like that Aspen lasagna quite a bit. Um, what is? I love my queso recipe. I use that on so many things um, because I make a lot of Mexican food. So I love the queso recipe. That's really, really something that, you know, you can put on anything. This, honestly, even this is one of my favorites. I made this when I was testing it out a couple of weeks ago. And I ate it, like I said, I ate it three meals in a row. I don't know. I go through phases. Oh, you know what? I love macaroni and cheese. See, I like to sit. I'm like, I'm a simple girl. Um, I love macaroni and cheese. Maybe I'll make that. I make it with, um, again, from one of my favorite cookbook authors, Issa Chandra Moskowitz. I got the idea from her, but she uses a cup of cashews. I'm not going to use a cup of cashews. So I use like three quarter cups of um, garbanzo beans and a quarter cup of cashews. And then I kind of follow her recipe and make, make it that way. Amend the recipe. That's one of the things I teach in my cooking classes that you just, you know, you could take anything that you like to eat in your former life and just amend it to be whole food plant-based. Now that was already plant-based because it was Issa Chandra Moskowitz, but it was too, too much fat for me. I'm not going to eat a cup of um, like I said, cashews, that's just too much. So that's something I eat a lot. And I use like a, that tolerant pasta, lentil pasta. So that's something I like. All right, let's see if this is, it's not quite boiling, but I think that's okay. Cause you know what? Sometimes when it, it's really boiling, boiling, I'm going to let it go for just another second. But one thing to watch out for is when it gets boiling, boiling, like crazy boiling, um, the saucy part will come up and stick to the sides around here and you have to kind of scrape it down. But doesn't that look good already? It looks like <laughs> It's really good. I don't know if I put enough of the frozen vegetables. I probably could have put a smidge more. Maybe I will. T.S. wants to know, do you coat with arrowroot for thickening and what else can be used? Yes, you coat so that that um, stewy brothy part will thicken up a little bit. But you could use cornstarch. Um, if you're going to use flour, I would double. I just use two tablespoons of the arrowroot or cornstarch. But if I were going to use flour, I would probably just, I would use four tablespoons um, but yes, that's a good question. And like I said, I did it out of order. Normally, what you're supposed to do is um, 
coat the vegetables before you put the uh, liquids in, but it's fine. Everything always ends up being okay. It's not brain surgery, so everybody will win. I'm gonna put a couple more frozen vegetables in. Maybe just them. I think I'm just gonna do green beans. I think there's enough of the others. Um, now I'm gonna transfer it to the oven where it can continue to cook. Okay, now it's going good. Okay, so I'm just gonna turn the heat off. See the mushrooms haven't cooked down, they're still big. That's what you want, the big meaty mushrooms. Okay. Now I'm just gonna put the lid on. Do not forget that when you take this out of the oven, it is gonna be smoking hot. So don't just, obviously you know that. I don't even know why I'm saying that. That's such a mom thing. Don't forget it's gonna be hot when you take it out of the oven. Duh. Okay, so that's cooking. It's at 425. Um, now we're gonna work on our potatoes. Okay, so I, okay, I, um, in order to save time, I peeled my potatoes already. I know like Ann Esselstyn would be very upset that I took the, the skin off, but I like mashed potatoes without skin. So anyway, I peeled them and I put them in ice water and that way they, they don't turn brown. So like, that's a little trick when I'm having people over for, you know, something where I'm making mashed potatoes, I just put it in a pot of cold, cold water. I actually just put a little water and a lot of ice and then it stays um, nice and crispy and they don't turn all yucky and brown. So we're gonna make the mashed potatoes now. and. It's so simple. It's just, you know, potatoes that are boiled. Can you get my favorite potato where you live, the Hannah Yam? I can. You know, I do not love sweet potatoes as much as you do. Um, I don't like sweet foods. I like really savory i do like sweet but hannah's i know it's not, not as sweet see, here's the thing hannah's are not the, the japanese the hawaiian the, the stokes those are really sweet the hannah's are more like kind of a cross between a sweet potato and a regular potato hannah's are not as sweet as the other ones that's probably why i like them the best okay do you um you make mashed potatoes out of them i have do you like it do you think it would be good with the stew i think i would love it that's what i think <laughs> I think you would too. I think I'll give it a try. You know what? If Chef AJ tells me to try something, I'll try it. Because you've never failed me yet. I made your, um, now it's become a Thanksgiving tradition. I love your cranberry relish so much. Or do you call it relish? Cranberry? Yeah, relish sauce. Relish. Oh, it's so good. I just eat it. Like that's something I could eat for dessert. Just like in a little dish it's so good and so bright i love the orange flavor to it mm. yeah so you haven't steered me wrong if you tell me i'll do it might be worth so, a try yeah why not i mean what could happen okay so i know it's best to get your water boiling and then put your potatoes in but the truth is i don't like plunking my potatoes into boiling water because it always burns me so i just do it all at once it always turns out fine. Like I said, it's not brain surgery. Nobody's gonna die. If you get your potatoes going, you put some water in here. I guess you get it. I guess you do the water boiled and then um, put your potatoes in just so it's hot and it's already going. But like I said, I don't want to plunk them in. So they're going like that. Uh, turn that on so you can see. Voila. We'll wait for them to boil. Um, and then we're just going to mash them up. But I've already, I actually have. Whoops. 
where it's already ready. I made some last night, some mashed potatoes and beef stew. And I ate it for dinner. And like I said, I'll probably eat it for lunch again. So easy and so yummy. I mean, and that went fast, right? It wasn't even, it's not even a hard thing to make. It's not. And Do I you like to serve it um, like with the, the potatoes on the side? Like I imagine like just a big old plate of potatoes with a well and then putting it in the potato. That's exactly, I got my bowl here. That is exactly what I was going to show you. I'll show you if these potatoes will boil in a decent amount of time. That's what I was going to show you. But yes, that's exactly what I do. I get it. It's a giant bowl of potatoes. I don't think you can have enough potatoes. And then I do exactly that. I make a little well in it. Here, let me get my overhead camera back. And then this is some leftovers of the stew from last night. And then I put it right in there. Oh, it's so good. Why can't restaurants make food like this? I, I mean, know, they do, but right? not healthy. Not healthy. And there was nothing in there. And then I just chop up like a smidge of rosemary. Put it right on top. Oh, the rosemary smells so good. But it is such a delicious combination. But look at that. Yum. Did you, show us how, do you, do you want to tell us how you made the mashed potatoes? Your recipe is in the show notes. Yes. Um, I'm boiling the potatoes now. We can wait for those. I mean, we can still talk and then go back to them if you want. But yeah, all, all I really do is just boil the potatoes like you see me doing. and then. Uh, drain them. And then I used to use the handheld like beater old kind of thing, but Hannah Kaminsky, who comes to my house for Thanksgiving now, tells me don't do that. It makes them gluey. Just hand mash them. And I put some uh, oat milk. I use Pacific brand oat milk. And I just do, you know, I don't really have measurements because you just kind of have to see. You you cannot screw this up. Just add a little at a time and then just keep mashing, keep adding a little milk, and that's it. Um, if you want, if you still use salt, you know, you could you could use salt, but this is I don't think I don't even think the mashed potatoes need salt because it's getting so much of the broth and everything like that. But I mean, can you imagine just like more cozy? Do you ever cook it in the Instant Pot, your potatoes, rather than just boiling them on the stove? I don't have an Instant Pot. I what? know. All right, you, all right, we're going to have to replace you. Sorry about that. Are you kidding? Really? I know. We have this conversation every time. And every time I'm like, okay, I'll get an Instant Pot. And then I never do. And I don't know why. I don't know why. I'm going to get, okay, I'm saying it again. I'm going to get one. We'll see if I'm lying. I... How long, what, tell me, tell me about cooking them in the Instapot. What did, well, I just, you know, I don't know. I, I have this little basket that's really cool because then you, you know, it, it sits above the water and you just lift it out and I just do like 10 minutes and boom. Oh, that does sound good. I know. I mean, why don't I have one? I, I feel know. like I have so many things in my kitchen that I guess I've just been like, all right, I got to draw the line somewhere because I have just like, every, you know, all the things the air fryer and the Vitamix and the poison art, like, you know, just so many things that I'm like, do I need another thing? I just would think it's the most important thing is the instant pot and the air fryer. That's just me. I, I think you're right. Okay. We'll see if I'm lying. Cause I do every time I'm like, okay, I'm going to get instant pot, but I do. I see them at the grocery store. Do you have like a particular brand? I love the instant pot. Uh, the I, is that the only brand? 
Well, no, they, I'm sure there's a ton of other brands at Walmart, just- Costco, but I love Instant Pot. The thing that to me that's most important that I'm, I'm not married to any particular brand is I, my, I think Instant Pot still gives a $10 discount if you use my name, but I don't know. I haven't been in touch okay. with them, but I do like a large one. So I just feel the six okay. is too small. And the, you know, I bet you there is a way to modify the recipe, which by the way is in the show notes, guys, to, to the Instant Pot. It may not be quite as rich, but you know. So would you cook the stew in the Instant Pot too? I, you might be able to, I, I, I'm going to work on that. I think I like to just, I like to throw everything in. That's... We'll figure it out. Hey, uh, we'll Sus- figure it out. Susanna wants to know uh, if she can't get, or she doesn't have that dark looking apple cider. Can she just use, you know, the clear apple juice or is it different when it's like more of a cider and a dark? it's this one's not I yes the answer is yes you can always use whatever you have it'll be fine you may need to put like a smidge more um Worcestershire I don't know to give it because this gives it some tang too uh does she live somewhere like where there's not all whole foods or she lives in Canada so oh well you know what if you can't get it you can't get it it'll be fine like I always say, it's nothing really matters less. It'll be all be okay. Um, but just taste it and see if you have to add something because this gives it like a little tang and then the um, Worcestershire gives it a little tang. So the dark and cloudy is better. And this is, um, I got this at Central Market here and I'm in Austin, Texas. So we have this great uh, HEB grocery store. And H-E-B, Central Market's like the fancy H-E-B. So they have this at H-E-B, coincidentally. They have their uh, fancy brand at H-E-B. Um, I also have gotten it at Whole Foods. It's a lot more expensive at Whole Foods. It was like $9. This was like $5. So it's a little pricey, but it makes a difference if you have the dark and cloudy one. I think it tastes better. And, you know, this is a recipe that I've been working on for a long time. I've, I've made this for a long time and I thought, let me try, I'm going to try and fancy it up. So I did like a red wine reduction. Then I did like some muddled cherries and, you know, I just tried all different kinds of things. And every time I tasted it after I like judged up the recipe, um, I was like, you know what, this is just better. The original way, just simple. This is just simple food and delicious the way it is. So um, I don't think you could screw it up by doing doing regular apple juice. It'll be okay. Well, what if you have no apple juice at all? Because one of the viewers says, I want to make this right now. Connie says, can she substitute anything for the apple juice? Does she have apples and a juicer? <laughs> I, I would think that you need some apple juice. I think you need something. I think that's an important part of the recipe. I mean, I know typically you can get away with other things, but I do actually think this is kind of an important part. I'm sorry, Connie. I think you might need to go to the store. Uh, Or borrow an apple from a neighbor. I know. If you have a juicer, borrow a couple apples from the neighbors. Or There's probably a neighbor with a kid who has apple juice. Yeah. There's a question from a live viewer. What made you choose the name Well Elephant? Oh, thank you for asking. Um, I chose Well Elephant because elephants are big, beautiful herbivores supported by their community. And you are too. Um, That's that's kind of what made me think of it, because I just love when you see elephants and they're all in like a little pack and they're always just caring for each other, caring for all the babies just, you know, just caring for each other as a community. And they're herbivores. They're like us. They eat the plants. Yep. And nobody asks them, where do you get your protein? Yep. Nobody asks them where they get their protein. So that's, yeah, that's why I named it that. Um, This apple juice is brilliant. Oh, a video of a thousand nights says, what about you maybe using applesauce? You know, I was just thinking about that, but I don't know. I mean, I thought about that when she asked about substitutions. I I don't know. It could work, but I feel like the juice has the little more of the tang to it. You're looking for the tang. Um, 
I feel like you need apple juice for this recipe. I'm sorry to say. That's okay. Do you, which do you, what potato masher do you use? The one that looks like talk so you'll get big yeah oh sorry uh it's this potato masher I don't yeah, that's know the exact one I have I got it like yeah. 10 bucks or so at Bed Bath yeah I just got mine at the grocery store I think oh wow but, um yeah that H-E-B they have they have everything there they really do um it's an amazing grocery store my potatoes are still not boiling and so See, if you had uh, an instant pot, it would be done by now. <laughs> Just <kidding>. It's true. <laughs> Just kidding. you. <laughs> no, you're right. I mean, um, and I see them all the time. I should just, what, I'm going to, okay, I'm going to do it. If I have a cause to ever get you a gift, I should get you one. I just, yeah. I, honestly, I really do use it every day. My, we steam our greens in the little one. We have the three quart. I don't have the six quart. I find that that just wasn't a good size for me, but I love making big things of soups and stews in that. Well, uh, Chris says your hair looks great. Um, Jesse's saying a non-reduced golden balsamic vinegar, maybe instead if they don't yeah. have apple juice, it, but what if she doesn't have balsamic vinegar? Yeah. I mean, that's true. Jesse always has good ideas, but um, that could be because it would be tangy. Yeah. You're looking for a little tart, but not well, Yeah. Tart. A little something. Yeah. It's, it has just, and it, and then the juice also adds a little sweetness without being like sweet. Cause like I said, I don't really love sweet foods. It just has all the right, has all the right steps. It's so good. Mm. Mike says instant really hot potatoes are a match made in heaven. I, okay. You know, sometimes I don't even feel like I need to put non-dairy milk. I can just use a little bit of the water that I steam the potatoes in and it, it comes out fine. Yeah, I bet you could. And especially in a recipe like this, where the potato is a co-star. Um, I think you're right. You probably could do that. So what, what you said, you have a little Instapot, instant, is it instant pot? Instant pot, instant? but we, you know, we sometimes, everybody says it's instant. actually instant pot, but instant, you know, we'd sometimes we let say it insta. instant. Um, yep. God, I'm so out of it. Sorry, guys. That's um, <laughs> Well, it just shows you can do a great job. You don't have to have it, but I feel like if you had it, you might use it, you know? I think you're right. Um, so what size do you have? You said you use the big I, one. Well, I, this, uh, I've given, I gave my six away because it's, it's too small for me to make my big batches of soups and chili. So I use the three quart when I'm just steaming the greens that we're eating. Okay. Day, very easy, very quick. And then the eight quart to make my big uh, soups and stews. And also because I like to cook artichokes and you can fit four jumbo artichokes in the oh. They actually have a bigger size now, a 10 quart, which I just, I don't have room for one more thing either, but that would have been really cool. Okay. Yeah. So how much, uh, like chili, is that like a big, like that red pot that I was just cooking? Yeah. Is well, that you know, you know, what's interesting. So my, my most popular chili is my black bean mushroom chili and mushrooms have a lot of water, so they can take uh -huh. up a lot of space, but then they cook down to nothing. Right. And so I find like with that recipe where I'm doing like two pounds of mushrooms, the whole pot is filled, but then after it cooks, it, it reduces, whereas it would never fit the recipe just didn't fit in the six quart. Right. Okay. So I'll get the eight quart. That sounds like. I think you'll okay. be happy because you like to cook for people and you like leftovers. Oh, yeah. You know? Yes. Do I still fly with an instant pot? You know what? I haven't really flown. I haven't done an in-person speaking engagement since November of 2019. And my next one is May of next year, the Seattle Veg Fest. And I probably won't take my instant pot because it's a short trip. I'll take my Pamper Chef microwave steamer and just steam my vegetables in the hotel because usually there's a microwave somewhere in a hotel, if not in your room. Yeah. Upstairs. I can't believe you're traveling with your instant pot. That's well, I amazing. haven't I haven't traveled, like I said, in three it's been almost three years, but now I, I just do the microwave steamer. It's a lot easier. You can throw it in a suitcase. But I did for years. I made a video about it. So yeah. yeah. That's just, I admire that. That's really good. I thought I was crazy traveling with all my stuff, you know, just, I mean, I bring a lot of food with me, but it's pretty much ready-made. I don't cook that much on the fly. I'm going to just see if I need to scrape down the um, sides of this. My potatoes are going pretty good over here. Let's see if we can Kathy, see what's Kathy going says, on. Kathy says um, your food looks great and that she's made your banh mi potato sandwiches so delicious. Great recipe. Oh, good. That was what I made the last time. Yeah. This is not, this is good. 
I didn't have to scrape it off the sides. Can you see? Let's, it's time to get you a new cutting board. Ah. <laughs> they, you know, know. some beautiful ones that I can't think of the name right now. They were on my show for a uh, small business Sunday, Mallory. They have beautiful, beautiful ones they make with like vegan sayings and things like that. Oh, wow. I know. Yeah. Send me a link. If you think about it, I, do, I could use a new, can always use a new cutting board. I have like, I have a bunch of them, but I'm just, the potatoes just, are going. I'm just, I'm just yanking your chain. Your cutting board is actually fine. I'm sure. I know. I, I, uh, I do like a good cutting board, but I have used this one quite, quite lovingly. But yeah, I mean, I don't know if you need to see the potatoes are going. Let's see. Why is it going back to my cutting board? That's weird. Huh. Okay. Anyway. Well, the potatoes are boiling now and I'm just going to mush them up, but that's really it. Nothing, nothing more to see, I think, um, unless you want to see me mashed potatoes. Why not? You know, I, I love to put roasted garlic cloves in my mashed potatoes. I know good. that is good. And I do, I have done that. I don't know why, like for this, I always just think like, oh, it's just simple. And I don't know, just a you know, I just did something so stupid. I didn't even see if they were ready. I just dumped out all those potatoes and the water and they weren't even soft enough. They just started boiling. I was just thinking, oh, they're boiled. They're fine. Okay. I so think it depends how big they are. <laughs> I don't know why I just did that. I didn't even see if they were soft. They're like, some of them are soft, but they're definitely not ready. So I'm going to have to put them back in and reboil them. So I think you won't be seeing me mashed potatoes Aww. today. Well, we look forward uh, to seeing you mash it another time. Um, when I cook everything at once, don't the veggies get overcooked versus the potatoes? It just depends on the recipe and how big it's cut. Usually the only thing that ever gets overcooked in an instant pot are things like zucchini or greens. So I just add them afterwards. Oh, yeah. Like this, that's another reason why I chop everything really big in this recipe. So it doesn't come out mushy like these, the, uh, Carrots even have like, they're not mush. They're perfect. They're just perfect. And I cook it in that Dutch oven in my oven at 425 for like 40, 45 minutes. Um, it's perfect. Oh my God. I can't believe I just do that with the potatoes. What a dingbat. But see, it's real. You're keeping it real. People it's real. People want to see it. And like I said, who cares? I mean, I'll just stick them back in the water and reboil them. It'll be fine. Exactly. This is what we need to see cooking. From it's true. You, right. And it just goes to show you, it's so hard to really screw up a recipe. You have to really try because you can always taste it. You can always add more stuff to it. Um, it's hard for me to make recipes like this where people are going to recreate them because you have to be precise. And I am the queen of just throwing stuff in a pot until it tastes good. And I'm sure most people are. Who do That's exactly that. how I cook too. That's why it's, it's torture to have to write a recipe because who knows what it's going to be next time. It depends on what you have. Exactly. Except apple juice. You have to have apple juice, apparently. So <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Other than I, that. I have apple juice in my house. I don't use it a lot, do? but I do have it. It's one of those things, you know? You know, it's not something I keep in my house, but I will tell you, it is so good. Like I did take, I poured like myself this much apple juice um, before I made the recipe. And I was like, this is delicious. And I feel like that's something you just drink as a child. It's not something I'm going to sit around and drink. It's kind of, you know, probably not the healthiest drink you could have. Um, I mean, better than a soda or something if you're still drinking soda, but I was like, wow, this makes me feel like a kid drinking this. And also I remember after I had, um, I have three kids, after I had each baby and I was in the hospital, they brought me like apple juice with a bunch of ice. And I was like dying of thirst. And I was like, this is the best drink I've ever had in my entire life right here, right now. So good. So refreshing. But yeah. What do you put? Why do you have apple juice in your house? What, do what you did I use it for? It must have been. You know what? I, I did a dessert class around the holidays and for my fruit cake to, to macerate the fruit. So that's what I used it on sweetened apple juice. Oh, that sounds but good. I don't, we don't drink juice, you know. It's just, right. Yeah. I know. But like I said, it did taste delicious. Too sweet. But very good oh, yeah. after. Uh, I can imagine if you're in the hospital. 
I know you get like really dehydrated having children, but, <laughs> but yeah, it tasted really good. All the fluids come flying out of your body and you need to replace them. Lovely. It's <laughs> funny. So any ideas what you're going to make next month? Or guys, do you have any requests for Lauren? And, you know, put them in the chat. And and by the way, you know, you have a free cookbook. I put that in the chat and in the show yes. notes. Talk about that. If yes. Like. Yes. Well, I'm going to make next time ch- chicken salad. Um, and I'm trying. And this week I got to perfect my pretzel roll. Um, so I think it's going to be chicken salad on a pretzel roll. You won't be able to eat it because it's going to be made out of tofu, um, which is already like cooked tofu and then cooled. I, I really think I nailed the recipe because that was something I did used to like because I said, I didn't like chicken, but chicken salad didn't seem like chicken. That was chicken salad that was on a roll. So it wasn't a dead bird. You didn't really have to think about it. It wasn't on a bone. So, um, this is a good recipe. I'm going to make next time. I would love to take requests because I'm happy to try to think about what people want to eat. And then, yes, you can. Um, if you have not, I have a free cookbook and it has the Aspen lasagna in there. And you just go to wellelephant.com and download the cookbook. Um, I also have a class called Ace Plant-Based Eating. I think I put the um, link in there for a discount in the show notes. And ACE is an acronym. It stands for A is amend the recipe, C is cook without oil, and E is eat on the go. Um, and I think I feel like if you could do those three things, you can you can master this way of eating. Um, so that's that. Are there any other questions? Yeah, yeah, let me tell you. Let me let me read some of the uh, comments for requests. Uh, can you make a vegan stuffed cabbage? Can you do something with your queso? Uh, I saw some more. I just want to read a nice comment. Margaret says, Chef AJ, I just want to tell you one of the best shows on YouTube. Every episode is amazing and informative, inspiring and fun. And you're you're there here every day. Thank you. And if you like what you see, subscribe and hit the like button. I don't like to say that. People tell me I'm supposed to. Okay. Um, Here's the other thing. Oh, yeah. Angela says, do you have a vegan meatloaf? That's my dad's favorite, but he's an Atkins guy. So I never know what to make him. Uh, mayonnaise substitute nurse Sandy is asking for. Uh, so yeah, lots of, lots to think about. Yeah. Those are all classics. Yeah. I do make a, um, Sam, Sandy who asked for the Mayo Sandy. I think so. And then Cynthia wants cabbage rolls, cabbage rolls and stuffed cabbage. That's pretty much the same, right? I would think. Yeah. I think so. I don't know if I can do that. Cause I don't think that was something I ever liked before. So I can, I'll ask my mom. My mom will probably have a good recipe for that. I guess you could stuff it with lentils. And it had like, my mom's had like a tomatoy sauce on it. Is that how your family made it? I don't really even remember it very much, but I'm I'm sure sure we could do it. Yeah, I'm sure we could. But whatever your meatloaf is, maybe whatever your meatloaf meatloaf. is, you could do the in the stuffed cabbage. Yeah. But I I do want to work on my meatloaf recipe because that is something that I used to like. Um, and again, just like, I liked it with like the ketchup on the top. I'm pretty simple. I want it to taste yummy and good and satisfying, but okay. But what I was saying about, I do have, um, I did make up like a mayo for the, um, chicken salad that's coming up. So tune in for that. I forgot how I made it, but silken tofu and probably lemon juice and apple cider vinegar, all that. Oh, you know what I put in it? Caper juice like out of the caper bottle so i'll have that that's coming up what are capers i i they're little round it's green like things that are salted berry. but what really oh okay i, I think it's seen. a berry let me see have you ever seen I mean, one in like nature a, no i have not I have not seen it in nature but i feel like they're called caper berries um i'll i'll investigate we'll find out we'll get to the bottom of this a caper, um, that's what they do on Scooby-Doo, caper. That's right, a caper. I would have gotten it away, would have gotten away with it too. Had been for those meddling for kids. Cynthia's, meddling cabbage kids. Roll, Cynthia's cabbage roll has a sauerkraut and a tomato sauce. But yeah, we should ask people to send you, you know, like their recipes that are like not healthy or that are not. Yes. And you kind of like work on them because you're going to be. I could totally. Once, so. You know that what? I think is, that's a great idea. 
I don't know about the cabbage just because that wasn't something that I loved. And so I'm not sure what it should taste like. So I might not be great on that, but. Oh, I'm thinking I would love a French onion soup. That's something I love too. Okay. French onion soup. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Apple says maybe they're flowers from uh, capers or flower blossoms, berries from a bush. Who knows? Uh, Who the hell knows? Chris says she likes your comeback story for heart disease. Are you doing anything with PBNSG now? That's a mouthful. I am. Tonight, actually, is set. the reason I chose this day or requested this day is because the second Monday of every month, I know I'll be in town because I host the heart disease support group for PBNSG. Um, so if, you know, you can go to PBNSG.org. It's a great organization that they have. T- I think Rip Esselstyn was just on there. Chef AJ is going to be on there or. Were you just on there? Or I think I'm, when am I on? I don't even know. I better. You're on out. this year. I saw you in the just, lineup. Just tonight. tell me because I don't even think I have. I don't know. I think when I committed, I didn't have a calendar. So if you can find out, oh, Marianne is saying stuffed bell peppers. That sounds very good That'd too. Be good. Yeah. Nancy says that. capers are unripened green flower buds from the caper bush. Never seen a caper bush. Well, see, the, your recipes are so yummy. I'm going to see if I can figure out how to do the one you made in an instant pot, though. Hey, are okay. your potatoes ready since we've been chatting? It's okay, because I think people can figure out how to do this. You know, like I said, I just dumped them out, but it's really, you just get them with a potato. No, these are still hard because I dumped them out and I didn't fill it back up with water and start doing it. And, and you peel your potatoes. I do peel my potatoes and then you just, these are too hard. That's hilarious. Fail. That's why I like about using Yukon Gold is because you don't have to peel them. And they get See, I learned something new. They cook really yeah. fast, but they, you know, there's no such thing as a bad potato. Randy Carroll no. seconds. Randy Carroll seconds. Yes, I want French onion soup. So yeah. Oh, Ooh, this is a this is an interesting one from Mike. Coco vin. Oh my God, that's fancy. I don't know what you would use. What would you use? That's chicken, right? Well, yeah, they have all kinds of analogs now. Jackfruit, oh. maybe, maybe jackfruit au vin. That might be a little fancy for me, but I can look into it. Okay. And where did the name Aspen lasagna come from? Were you skiing in Aspen when you made Uh, it? Yeah, no, I don't ski. I just fall down the mountain and go to the hospital. That's what I like to do. Or I don't like to, but that's what happens. But um, I was actually a chef on a yoga retreat. My friend Melissa had a yoga retreat and I came along and I chefed. I did all the whole food plant-based uh, cooking for them. And that was something I kind of created because, you know, they wanted some hearty meals. They didn't, they didn't want bird food, these ladies, which I loved. I was like, thank God, some ladies who like to eat. These are my girls. These are my women. We drank wine and we ate lasagna and uh, I made pad thai. We had all kinds of good things, but yeah, I just started oh, calling pad thai. it. Pad thai is delicious. Pad thai is good. I don't really have my own recipe. I just make combinations of other people's recipes which I guess that's what other people do right you just look at recipes you like and then you kind of figure things out but I I don't have my own like really original recipe but I do love pad thai yeah yeah pad thai is good we we had Eric Lachester on the show and he made his version from when he had a restaurant and it was delicious oh uh what Diana wants to know what do you like with your spaghetti squash oh Well, spaghetti squash, I do two ways. I either do like, um, I cook, I do like chopped olives, like Kalamata olives and yellow peppers and kale. And what else do I put in that? Um, I like tomatoes, like sun-dried tomatoes and then like a marinara sauce and do it like that. Or I make it as a barbecue sandwich. I just do scrape out the insides and then you can just make your own um, barbecue sauce, or you can buy a jarred barbecue sauce that doesn't have a lot of sugar and make it like a barbecue sandwich. You can put some caramelized onions on top and some pickled jalapenos and an Ezekiel bun. So good. You could do it two ways. Nice. Hey, you know, how are you cooking your spaghetti squash? I like to cook it in the oven. You can boil it, but I feel like it gets too watery. So I just, you know, the hardest part is just cutting it in half. 
you cut it in half, you scoop out the seeds, and then you just bake it in the oven like at 375 or 400 until it's soft and you can scrape out the thing. Again, I'm going to be a mom and say, get your oven mitt, hold it because it's going to be burning hot, squeeze out some of the water, and then start scraping out the spaghetti squash. Well, now you really need an Instant Pot because that is one of the easiest ways to cook spaghetti squash. Oh, you set me up for that, didn't you? No, I just thought of it. I swear, you know, (laughs) that is one of the reasons. And, you know, that might be something for you to show on the show, because I think in addition to reinventing the plant-based classics, you could even technique, because a lot of people don't know how to cook a spaghetti squash. You could do it in the oven. You could do it in the Instant Pot and see which is a better, easier way. That's true. When I get my Instant Pot, apparently I'm definitely getting now. (laughs) only if you want well this has been a delightful delightful debut of plant-based classics thank you oh thank you and thank you for having me i can't wait to see you next month lauren i can't wait to be here next month thank you chef aj thanks everybody thank you guys for tuning in to plant-based classics with lauren burnick please come back at 4 p.m i have a bonus show today with nan simonson it's her 72nd birthday day and her book just came out on audible we're going to be discussing her journey she suffered from bulimia for over 50 years and recovered and wants to give everybody hope that has an eating disorder or just to live a powerful life and tomorrow we debut feeling great with lissa and nate and they're going to make a raw